Hey, this is Jana from Pearl Together, and I want to welcome you to the Sloth Series Knit Along that we're about to start for Hermione's Everyday Socks. We all voted, and this was the pattern that we decided we would knit for the Sloth Series. Now, what that means, if you're new to the Facebook group or you're new to the YouTube channel, welcome. What the Sloth Series is all about is knitting going through a pattern with you very slowly so that people are not intimidated by it, the little teeny needles and the little teeny diameter yard. I want people to be confident and to be able to understand how the sock is constructed and how, how it all goes together. Now I do things a little bit differently than, than anybody else on YouTube. And so I'm teaching you my method and the way that I prefer to do things. And just so you can, you know, take that or leave it, add it to your bag of tricks and do what works for you. I will always say, you're the boss of your knitting. Do what works for you. Do what makes you happy. And that might be different than the way I do it. And that's totally cool. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to follow along specifically and exactly with the pattern, that's okay too. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about doing it that way. But the point of this last series is just to build your confidence as a new knitter or a returning knitter if you've been, you know, not knitting for quite some time. And just to help you knit a pair of socks successfully. So we're gonna go really slow. We're gonna post an, a new video every two weeks for this particular series. Um, I will post a schedule in the Ravelry group for that, as well as there is a schedule in the files of the Facebook group section that shows a schedule of what you can expect for each new video or each every other week. So, that's what the Sloth series is all about. I want you to be able to ask any questions that you might have as we go through the process and be comfortable doing that slow. We're gonna be slothful about it. We're gonna enjoy the process and go pretty slowly. All right, let's take a look at what I've chosen to begin with. And I say begin with because that might change a little bit. Um, my daughter chose this Knit Picks Stroll Sock Yarn. It's a gradient. I really like how it morphs from one shade to the next, it's called Kale Yeah. Um, so let's look at the label. It says uh, seven to eight stitches per inch on one to three US sizes, one to three needles. Um, for me, I, I never, my knitting never comes out that way. Um, I might get eight stitches per inch on a, on a US size one or a 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, but you know what? This this is pretty thin. It's pretty uh, lightweight fingering. It is plied, but let's just take a look at it for a moment. It is, in my opinion, pretty thin. I'm likely to get more like probably 9 or 10 stitches per inch. So that's going to be important for me to swatch so that I know what my gauge is going into the pattern that we've chosen for our knit along. Now, I know that with the pattern, it will say, it will often say, um, you know, you want to try to get eight stitches per inch maybe because that's what the author of the pattern has written that for. But, you know, I'm going to show you how to adjust that for your attention in whatever swatch and the number of stitches per inch that you end up with. I like, I'm going to try this new needle this time. I got this, I have spur splurged a little bit for the Chai Goo. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that or not. Chai, Chai O Goo. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody leave a comment phonetically and tell me how you're actually supposed to pronounce that. These have very good reviews. It's surgical grade stainless steel. And then the cable is fabulous. There's, I mean, I can already feel that there's no, uh, there's no memory. It's not kinky at all. So I'm going to try casting on with the, I'm going to cast on with the 40 inch because I'm going to do magic loop. So I'm just going to cast on first to knit a swatch. Now, which just means a long tail cast on. I'm gonna do my slip knot here. Um, I have another video that I'll link to above for the long tail cast on where you can watch that with larger needles and larger yarn, um, slower. And I'm gonna apologize again for my Wyoming winter farm hands. And yeah, if you need manicured knitting, manicured nails, this will not be the place for you because we just keep it real. You know, I, I work outside a lot, so you get what you get. All right, so slip knot. And then I make my triangle and I go underneath. And again, this is the sloth series, so I will start out pretty quickly, but I do have a more detailed video about how to go about your long-tailed cast on. 
I'll link you to that up in the right hand corner. Click on the little eye. Uh, but I just do my little pinch here with my palm up around the thumb, forefinger, and I go underneath, wrap around counterclockwise. And there's lots of ways to go about this. There's lots of different maneuvers. Some people just use a thumb and go on like that. That's super awkward to me. I never learned that way. I'm only going to cast on maybe 20 or 30. I want enough of a representation over the span of more than just 10. For example, if I'm suspecting that this yarn is a little small in gauge and that I'm going to end up with 9 or 10 stitches per inch will be my prediction. But I want to do more than that so I can get a good average. Now, the other thing is that people normally knit a slightly different gauge in the round than you do back and forth. Because knitting in the round, you're not purling, you're just knit, 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 knit. Uh, whereas in this situation, if I'm just knitting a little rectangle, I'm just going back and forth and I am purling. Now, the act of purling, um, often people purl a little more loosely than they knit. And that averages out, obviously, over the span of several rows. But that's why your back and forth gauge might be a little different than your in the round gauge. Um, and that's not true for everybody. And the, the whole point here is everybody is an individual. You know, I'll, I'll talk about some swatching and it comes up a lot lately in, in the Facebook group. Um, but you really need to do a swatch so you will not be disappointed in the way that your socks fit. Now, if you don't want a swatch, and you want to live dangerously and you want to just uh, go ahead and start your sock, then you at least need to take some measurements. Um, but yeah, you also need to be okay ripping that out. If you get started in the round and you start knitting the pattern and it doesn't fit, you need to be okay with tearing that out and frogging that um, and beginning again. And if you are okay with, with that possibility, then by all means, live dangerously and go, go forth. You are the boss. However, if that would break your heart to tear out two, several inches of work you've already completed, then save yourself that heartache and do a swatch first. Okay, I've knitted several rows of this, and while it is pretty light fingering, I'm doing okay with 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I, I'm pretty happy with the, the way the fabric feels. I'm fine with that, so I'm going to go ahead and measure... So when I hold that on there without stretching it in the back and just letting the fabric relax, I can see that I'm getting about nine and a half stitches per inch, I think. Um, let me get a needle here, the other half of the needle to kind of po point with and use my progressives. This is a little bit difficult for me to uh, do this, obviously, in the camera. So there's, you kind of got to, Measure the V's, not the upside down V's. Otherwise, you're measuring. So I always have kind of have to look up here to see the loop, see the stitch on the needle. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, I have nine and a half stitches per inch. Um, so I may just call it nine. I'll do the sock calculator thing and see. Um, I measure, I'm doing this for my daughter, so now I will measure her, the circumference around the ball of her ankle, or the widest part of her ankle, and then the circumference around the ball of her foot. Um, so that's roughly eight inches. We did that last night. So times nine, I'm gonna cast on 72. Now I'm actually gonna tear this out. And I know that seems like a waste of time, but really, if you, if you do your swatch and you can write that down and keep track, You'll be glad you did. Okay, so now that I've completed the swatch, and I probably should have knitted a little bigger, um, and that might come back to bite me, but you know, doing so is a risk, and so I'm prepared to take that risk because I've done it many times. <laughs> so, but if you feel like you need to knit more of a square, then by all means do that. I will also encourage you to keep either keep a knitting journal or a notebook um, with your patterns, the yarn that you use, the needles that you used, and that combination is just kind of a cool record to have. So if you ever want to go back and knit, knit the same pattern again with a similar or even the same yarn, you'll know what you did. Because, you know, I've earned all these gray hairs, but I cannot remember that stuff. Um, 
The other thing is if you don't want to keep a paper notebook, Ravelry is fabulous. Ravelry.com, go and create an account there. Um, you can keep your projects and it asks you to input the yarn, the needle size, and any notes that you want. And so any um, alterations that you are you know, divergent from the pattern that you may have chosen to do, you can list all that there. I I tend to write it up on, on the pattern that I'm using and this will be no exception and I'll, I'll show you why. So as we're looking at the pattern, um, you can look at this with me. The yarn that she suggests is fingering weight 350 to 400 yards, unless you have gargantuan feet like me. Um, yeah, I can't get by with that little of a yarn unless I have two skeins or I'm prepared to do contrasting toes and heels. Unfortunately, my children have bigger feet as well. So hopefully we'll get by with this one. Um, we'll see if I'm gonna be playing yarn chicken or not. Okay, so she's using needles uh, US size one, which is 2.25 millimeter. Um, she does two circular needles. We have several people in our group that do two circular needles, magic loop, double pointed needles, or DPNs. I recently got a hold of a pair of uh, Addy Crazy, well, they used to be called Flexi, Flexi Flips, and now they're called the Addy Crazy Trio or some such thing. I don't know, but it's interesting. They're not double pointed. They're flexible like this, so you'd use two of them. One's the working needle, just like with double pointed needles, but then you use two of them, and you have your project on there. Whoops like that and then you have one more that's your working needle i might try that i don't know so if one time you see me doing magic loop and then the next video you see me using these we we'll, i don't know we'll see we'll see i might try them see if i'm like them and then if i don't i might take it out i don't know we'll see we'll see how my gauge might adjust or change using those different needles because i'm really used to magic looping all right I'm casting on more than 64 stitches. I'm probably casting on 72, I'm thinking. Um, this pattern, she starts off with a one by one ribbing, which is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. <sighs> Super tedious. I prefer a two by two ribbing, knit two, purl two. I'll probably do that, because I'm the boss of my knitting. You do what works for you. Um, if you want to go by the pattern exactly, I will certainly walk you through that, but I'm also going to explain the way that I like to do things differently and uh, hopefully that won't be confusing. You can always leave comments and questions in the Facebook group or here in the YouTube video. Um, right, so she knits nine stitches per inch on her gauge but only casts on 64 stitches. So she works 20 rows of one by one ribbing, you know, 20 rows, see if you see what you think. Knit the ribbing and until it's big enough to make you happy. Okay, so we will go through this upon cast on. We will absolutely go through it step by step. But I wanna welcome everybody to this last series Knit Along. I want you to encourage you to join the Facebook group, which I will link below. Join the Ravelry group, which I'm trying to get off the ground, but it's been a little bit slow because I've been pushed and pulled here and there and I'm a little slow getting that going. So if you're on Ravelry, you can find me there at Celtic Prairie Farm. And I'll link that on the video also. And join the group. Uh, the Pearl Together Ravelry group, you can join that as well and kind of help me get that going. We'll have some comment threads and stuff. Especially if you know of people or you are not on Facebook, then that's a great alternative. So, all right. Do your swatch. Pick your yarn and your needles. You want, there's been a ton of talking in the group about needles and yarn combination. It's so individual. So if I knit a lighter weight fingering yarn like this with a 2.25 millimeter needle, I know a couple of people in our group that would knit this with a size zero needle. Some people will say, no, use number one and a half or 2.5 millimeter or 2.75 even. It's really individual because it depends on your tension. It depends on your style of knitting, whether you're a thrower or whether you're a continental knitter. It, it really depends on so many different things. I cannot tell you use this size needle for this yarn. I can tell you what I do, 
but that's the importance of swatching so that you can feel it. You can see the fabric, the resulting fabric and whether it's too airy and loose for you or it's too tight and it's too stiff and dense and you don't care for it because of that. It really is an individual decision. So pour yourself a drink, take some time to swatch. Um, swatching back and forth is a little bit different than knitting in the round. And I explained that earlier. So take some time to swatch and make sure that you're happy with the yarn and combination. And um, if you can only, if you're limited in the needles that you have, um, then I would say just swatch and do the best you can. Um, you can also order fairly inexpensive needles on Knit Picks and you know, you can have them, you can order those off Amazon. And if you're Amazon Prime, you can have them at your house in two days. All right, that's all that is to say. Welcome. Be sure to leave me any questions or comments or feedback, um, constructive criticism, and I'm really glad that you're here. Okay, look for the cast on video on looking on my calendar on March, Friday, March 30th. All right, talk to you later.